All right, hello everyone, and welcome to GeoTab's Wildcard Wednesday. Uh, wonderful Wednesday morning, and uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Brian Gotti. I'm one of the Learning Center trainers down here at GeoTab in the uh, Las Vegas office. And for today's session, we'll be hearing from Justin DeGaulle, one of the product support specialists here at GeoTab. Uh, he'll be presenting on troubleshooting basics, mainly with, as you can see on the screen, device not communicating and communication issues. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Justin to get started. Awesome. Thank you, Brian, for that intro. Uh, yeah, once again, um, my name is Justin DeGal. I've been with Product Support for uh, about two years or so. I'm very happy to be here and to actually give you guys this training on basic troubleshooting with a device not communicating. As you can tell, it is actually one of the most common issues that a lot of customers do go into. So we definitely want to provide you this webinar uh, training just to show you guys uh, what to do in those kind of cases and also why they happen. So starting off, a uh, quick introduction. So with a device not communicating, it's the most common issue that product support team works with. There are many factors that can affect the device's connection and ability to communicate with the MyGeoTab platform, but there are ways to troubleshoot the issues that may be caused. In this webinar, we will learn how to troubleshoot, identify where the issue is, and utilize GeoTab resources and tools. So starting off with the first question, why does a Go device stop communicating? So the common causes are Go device is loose, usually improper installation, vehicle diagnostic port is malfunctioning, whether it be a harness, if, if one is being used, is possibly faulty. Low battery power coming from the vehicle. Cellular connectivity issues. The device plan is incorrect. Maybe even possible billing issues. Starting off with basic troubleshooting. First off, you want to ask yourself with the troubled device is how is the Go device installed? Does it use a harness or is it directly plugged into the port? Is it secured by a zip tie? What lights are illuminating? As you know, red equals power, green equals cellular blue equals GPS. Perform a device reset by unplugging the Go device and leaving unplugged for 30 seconds, then plug it back in. To see what a successful Go device communication is, you can see on the image, or that's what we'll look for when we are troubleshooting these Go devices to establish a perfect connection. Plug the Go device back into the port or the harness, then monitor where lights illuminate. If all three lights illuminate, the Go device has established a connection. If some or no lights are not illuminating, take the vehicle out for a five to 10 minute test drive to help the Go device establish a connection. If the Go device still does not show any sign of communication in the MyGeoTab database, then you can check the device warranty and make sure it's still applicable for a possible RMA. So the causes of a device not communicating. First off, a loose install can actually affect the Go device connection. Just a quick note, depending on where the diagnostic port is located, the Go device can be kicked and disrupted and disrupt the connection. So I know there are those vehicles that where the OBD2 port is actually directly underneath the dash and you know possibly your knee can kick it or you know uh, there are those kind of vehicles where the OBD2 port is installed so that is a possible issue. Uh, so troubleshooting for that what you want to do is ensure the Go device is plugged in correctly and if needed use a harness to avoid physical disruptions. Secure the installation with a zip tie not too tight but not too loose and as you can see in the image this is basically how we want to see the device installation to be installed with a zip tie in there. Moving on with the OBD2 port and AKA the diagnostic port in a vehicle. So the vehicle's diagnostic port is a possible common denominator for the Go device not being able to communicate. This can be due to the vehicle's age or previous maintenance done to it. So for example, smog checks or even extension add-ins. So troubleshooting for that one there, uh, you want to install the Go device in another known working vehicle possibly drive the vehicle for five to 10 minutes and verify lighting configurations. Moving on to defective harnesses. So harnesses are used in multiple vehicles, whether it be for extensions or for adaptation to different ports. If a device is showing no power, testing of the harness should be done. The troubleshooting steps for those is you wanna install the Go device directly into the port of the vehicle, take the vehicle out for a five to 10 minute test drive. And if the Go device connects, we have determined that the harness is the issue. If you can install the Go device directly into the port, then you should test the Go device with a known working harness in a known working vehicle. If the Go device connects, then we have determined the port is the issue. Low battery. So Go devices support 12 volt and 24 volt systems. The vehicle must have enough power coming through to power the Go device at all times. To troubleshoot this here, what you can actually do in the MyGeoTab database is run the engine false report and look for low voltage in power supply, bad battery or reinstall required. This may be caused by the diagnostic port losing power constantly and or providing low voltage. In cases of this nature, the vehicle 
battery may need to be inspected by a mechanic. So in this case, you could possibly just take it to an AutoZone or even O'Reilly's or anything like that, uh, where they could possibly do an inspection of the OBD2 port and the battery. Moving on to cellular and GPS connection. So all Go devices are required to have a cellular plan on it. Most common cellular carriers in the US are Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. In Canada, the carriers are TELUS and Rogers. If a vehicle's location is in an area where a cellular carrier does not have the strongest signal, that can cause the device to lose a connection. If a vehicle is being driven under a tunnel or is parked in a parking structure without a clear sky view, the GPS signal can be disrupted or, and lose connection. So to troubleshoot this here, um, what you can do is actually to determine the issues with the cellular carrier. What you can do is you can check the carrier's coverage map and compare it to the vehicle's known locations or routes. Second, you can unplug the Go device, then plug it back in to see if a power cycle refreshes the network. All right, moving on to the device plan. So I actually wanted to touch on this as well. Um, usually when customers do call in in regards to um, why their device isn't communicating and what the product support team sees is we usually see sometimes in this case, we do see the device plan is never activated or terminated. So this is basically just to kind of go over what we mean by that when it shows by never activated and terminated. So the Go device may not be able to communicate if it's never been activated to the MyGeoTab database or if the device plan has been canceled or terminated. If a Go device plan shows as never activated, this means that the device never found a communication to the server and the device should be provisioned a bit longer. So with the provisioning steps, with the ignition off, unplug device, then plug it back in and wait after six beeps pass. After the beeps, turn ignition on and let the device provision for about six to 10 minutes. Once you get all three lights to illuminate, take the vehicle out for a five to 10 minute drive for the device to register to GPS and cellular connection. So once again, for this, for this device plan to show up, this usually happens on the first installation when you are first getting your device, taking it fresh out the box, and then you plug it into the vehicle's port and you still see that it's not reading. So therefore, this is basically the provisioning steps that we suggest uh, doing. Basically just a little more provision to be done to the device, see if it can connect, because um, sometimes it does take longer than, some devices may take longer than usual, depending on the location as well. To determine if the Go device has been terminated or canceled, the product support team can actually do a device timeline lookup in our system to see when a Go device was terminated, and we can provide you that information. So device not communicating may be caused by a possible billing issue. So Go devices can stop communicating to, due to billing reasons. Stop communication will not only happen to one Go device, but all Go devices under that account in the MyGeoTab database will be affected. So in this case, it, it'll happen too as well, especially if you see it on the map. You'll see that all Go devices have stopped at the same exact time, and or maybe it will show it has no communication for the same amount of days. The, the issue with that possibly could be with, uh, with billing issues on that. Uh, for that one, you just want to feel free to uh, contact your reseller rep regarding any billing issues or billing, billing increase uh, with your account. And that about does it. Back to you, Ryan. Hey, thanks, Justin. There's a ton of information that we have uh, regarding really basic troubleshooting steps and how to uh, confirm if a device is communicating and if it is not. Uh, that's a wrap for this week's Wildcard Wednesday. Again, I want to thank Justin for joining us today and sharing this presentation. If you have any further questions regarding today's topic, please don't hesitate to reach out to your reseller or account manager. Until next time, I'm Brian Gotti, and on behalf of myself and everyone here at Geotab, I thank you for joining us on today's Wildcard Wednesday and wish you a productive and profitable week.